Zhoop, whoop, boom. Welcome to Visual Timmy Illustrations. In today's episode, I'm going to explain a little bit about how the brush system works in Procreate. So, this isn't made to be a super in-depth guide. This is just a quick run-through of the most important settings for brushes and how you can actually make your own. If we start off going to a simple pen, the spacing is going to be how close the dots are to each other. So in this case, the shape is actually a dot, and you can see that over here in the source shapes. To have a dotted line, you could just move the spacing up. You can do whatever you want with this, but most of the time, the spacing is really tight. The streamline adjusts how smooth your line is. The jitter adjusts how much jitter is in between each dot. So if you have a lot of jitter, you'll have kind of a mess, which works really great with texture brushes. And for something like Vector Pen Smooth, you'd want less jitter or no jitter. Fall off is gonna be how far from the end the brush falls off. Pretty simple. I don't personally use taper, but it would do just as you imagine. It would just taper it off for whatever amount you have set. Adjust the size of the taper. You can have it taper it in, have it taper out, have it taper based on pressure. Not something I normally use, but it's there if you want it. The next important part you need to learn is the source. There is a pro library that comes with a ton of shape sources that are actually probably included in a lot of the stock brushes that come in here. But the cool part is you can insert your own photo and make your own brush. For example, the halftone brush is going to have a grain pattern that is the halftones and for the shape source is going to be a faded out circle. When I tap once, you'll have that faded out circle. Shape filtering will clean up any rough spots that are in the texture that you decide to go with. Since I made this one custom, I just left it on none, but a lot of times improved will help tighten it up and make it look a little bit more clean. Randomize will just randomize the starting position of the brush. Since this is infinitely repeatable, uh, it doesn't really matter where it starts. You can see on the grain source right here, if the corners are bleeding into each other like this, then it's super duper easy for you to make a repeating pattern brush. For a grain source that's blank and has no design, it technically is a repeating pattern just by being um, all white or all black by default. If we were to swap this blank grain source for something that's not infinitely repeatable, you'll end up painting something like this. If you wanted this to be a pattern that actually paints this splatter, we would swap this back to blank and we would swap this to the ink mess. This way, now we actually get that ink shape that we're painting with. Let's say you didn't want it to be like this. You can tighten up the spacing, jitter it a little bit, come over to the shape, maybe do a little bit of scattering, a little rotation. Now you have something a little more fluid. You can turn down the streamline, turn down the spacing, and now you have something much more thick. This is a beautiful brush. And that's just with the stock textures that are inside. You can definitely add your own flair by adding your own shape source. In another case where you have a infinitely repeatable pattern, like so, that even scales down when you, when you paint at a smaller brush size, you can see that the shape source is just a plain circle and the grain source is the infinitely repeated pattern. So the shape source is gonna be what the tip of the brush looks like. What is it gonna leave behind? In this case, we're leaving behind a circle. And the grain source is gonna be what's inside. And so in this case, you can get a repeatable pattern by having a shape source of a circle and a grain source of a seamless texture. You can find seamless textures online, you can download them for free on certain websites, and you can also make them yourself, which is what I chose to do with all of this. If the movement is set low, 
to stamp, then when you tab it once, you will get just that single stamp. And when you drag it, you'll just get a row of stamps, which is not what you're looking for. This is a problem that I came up with a bunch of times trying to figure out how that worked. So to solve that problem, once you have your repeatable pattern, you're gonna drag the movement. You can get some pretty cool things having it bleed like that. Very cool. But that's not what you're looking for. If you want a repeatable pattern, you're gonna put all the way to rolling. Of course, the size will just adjust how dense the pattern is. You can have it follow size, but I have it a little bit less. And when you scale it up, boom, you can paint a huge one. The best way to learn is to go through each setting with a brush that you really like and start adjusting things. Well, first you can make a duplicate. So let's say you just come over to favorite and you like the round brush. Go ahead and slide it over, duplicate, and start tweaking it around. Start messing with it and find out what it does, what it's made of, check the shape source, all of this stuff and just tweak it until you find something that you really like. Start out by grabbing a brush, figuring out what it does, tweak all the settings, and then you can get to making your own brushes. So if you wanna make stamp brushes like my Galactic Stamps Pack, where you can just pick a brush and tap down, which are super helpful if you already have your kind of style and you know what you like to work with and you have little things that you use often, maybe um, maybe it's your, your logo, something like that, you can easily make a brush out of it. Let's just say you wanted to make a heart. Draw yourself a nice heart. How pretty. Fill up full of black. Figure out how you like your little heart. Make it the prettiest heart ever. And go ahead and scale it up to a pretty good size. Go share PNG. It'll load, it'll do its thing, save image. Then you come over here to brushes. We'll duplicate that just so we can. We'll name this one. Heart. So first, you want your grain source to be an all-white background. So you can swap from Pro Library and scroll all the way down. Boom. Blank. Then you want to insert a photo for your shape source. Because that's what we're doing. We're stamping shapes. So you see right here, camera roll. We have the heart. If you have it inverted, then you'll actually paint <laughs> hearts like that, which is not what we're going for. So boom now you have your heart set come over here to general use stamp preview zoom it up so i can see what size it is great size i always drag this all the way to max pencil this is a personal preference um, i like to have the size a little bit on pressure so if i want to make a couple hearts i can do some light ones and i can do some bigger ones by pressing harder since it's just a stamp you don't have to worry about grain because our grain is just a plain white background um, you can mess with the shape a little bit, so if you want your hearts to, uh, you know, spin around, then you can adjust how much scatter they have. The uh, shape filtering is on improved, and the stroke spacing is what's important. Because if you have it too tight, you'll try to make one part, and it'll make a whole bunch. So open up your spacing, give yourself some room to stamp, 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 just like that. Streamline doesn't really matter unless you're actually, like, trying to make... Like a cute little like heart circle or something like that and jitter doesn't really matter either unless you're trying to paint like a star field then you might want jitter because it'll just kind of make it a little bit more random and there you go just like that now you can make as many little hearts as you want